Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Everybody is winding down their week on a good note. I hope that the things that you set out to do and accomplish this week that you made progress. Remember, it's not just about hitting the goal. It's about measurable progress. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, the, the definition that I use uh, for success is progression towards a worthy goal. Uh, I got that when I was a kid by listening to um, the LPs of Earl Nightingale. Um, and that's what I use. I celebrate my steps. Uh, every move towards my goal is a, a, a step of success. Um, achieving my goal is monumental, but it's not the only part of my success. And I definitely encourage you to take that approach you're going to find a lot more joy and fulfillment in life when you celebrate the small things uh with that being said look i'm here for a brief moment to talk about something and place an emphasis and a spotlight on something that i think that we need to talk about i've been saying it for so long we uh tend to focus on the sensationalized uh, things that are constantly tossed at us uh, but have very little intrinsic value, very little capacity to move us towards those things that provide us the ability to be and do the things that we say we're going to do. We talk liberation and empowerment, but we're focused on entertainment, gossip, and uh, celebrity uh, happenings. Uh, we miss the things that matter. Dr. Claude Anderson would probably say that we are majoring in the minor. And it costs us dearly, and yet we continue to continue to do it. I'm looking and I've seen all of the back and forth on black Twitter, on YouTube, on Facebook, uh, on Twitter and Instagram. Um, well, I said black Twitter, but uh, concerning Ciara's uh, dress she wore to the Vanity Fair uh, event during the Oscar uh, celebration. Um, I'm not giving any attention to that dress, to Russell and Ciara, not today. Um, but what I want to point to is I'm not telling anybody not to have an opinion. I have an opinion, but that's my opinion. And I'm, I'm always asking, does my opinion carry weight? And the more you play off in a field of nothingness, the less that what you do and say matters. People will do it. People will celebrate you for it. People will celebrate you for talking about BS and nothingness. People will celebrate you for pushing and still uh, jumping on and, and, and pushing this beef between Will Smith and Chris Rock. They'll celebrate and talk about it. But when you want to talk about something serious, when you want to talk about something of substantive nature, they don't give you the same weight and gravity of uh, credibility because you've been talking about trash. 
your focus isn't on things of weight. So they see you as someone to have fun with, someone to kick it or talk. But when it's time to talk real stuff, I uh, uh, trust you to contribute to something of intrinsic value. Your value goes down. So when I give an opinion about a celebrity, it's because of something I see that has the ability to be a teaching moment. And so I haven't been in and on the whole Chris Rock uh, special thing. Uh, there's a lot going on there, and I just don't even want to get into it. There are some things that are teaching lessons in it because there's a whole lot going on. Uh, but that's still Hollywood. That's still millionaires beefing about stuff while we are living a life. Let me, let me change that. Multi-millionaires. These are rich people. Wealthy people. Let me change that. Wealthy people. Uh, if they manage what they have just right now, right, they don't even have to work the rest of their lives. These people are going to be okay. But we're the ones complaining about all the things that are going wrong. And we are riding and uh, jumping on everything that's going on. And it's amazing to me that when I'm looking on these channels, when I'm looking on these uh, news feeds, when I'm looking down and I'm seeing all the things that are being said about Sierra, Again, this isn't me telling you you're right or you're wrong. That's not the point here. That's why I won't give my opinion because that's not the point here. The point here is while that's happening, while everybody is going in and having an opinion and passionate about it, I mean beefing about it, cussing each other out about it, I mean filling your timelines with it, at the same time we've had two major banks collapse. I've been talking about wealth for a long time. Matter of fact, this week I released the Legacy Wealth Academy and the first course in that academy, which is the path to generational wealth. I've celebrated and and um, and I'm excited about that. For those who want to check it out, the link's in the box. But in that course, there's 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 a part that shows you the importance of understanding what's happening when there's a financial event. The event is major, and it's along the lines of the things that I've been telling you about for the longest on Money Monday and Wealth Building Wednesday. And nobody's having that conversation. Nobody's talking about what's going on. Nobody's talking about uh, the volatility in the U.S. dollar. Nobody's talking about uh, the banking system of uh, volatility. But everybody's talking about Sierra's dress. Um Again, what you focus on is what's going to impact your world. What you focus on is what you're going to feel the most. Again, those people have secured at least the financial side of their future. How they're living their lives, whether they're happy or not, and all that stuff, I can't speak on. But I can, I can tell you that the thing that the average person, person is most concerned about with is their finances. Um, uh, they're not. So if you're not studying them to see ways or means or moves to make, you know, if you're not thinking about getting into uh, the entertainment field, they shouldn't be your focus. Your focus should be on understanding the world around you. I don't know how many times I've said this, but we lose because we don't understand how things work. It's a common theme. There are going to be common things when you listen to me. If you uh, you listen to me, you watch me, you follow me. If, if you've ever been to one of my live events, you're going to understand that I'm very big on understanding how things work in in the world of finance, in the world of business, in the world of social progression, in the world of black empowerment. It's all the same. If you don't understand how things work, you're going to be exploited. You're going to be taken advantage of. You're going to be misguided, misled, misused, mishandled. And then we complain about it. And won't. And here's the thing. Because we don't understand how things work, there's so many times we're literally financing our own demise. We're literally spending money into economies, into spaces that are empowering the very people that we're complaining are holding us back. But because we don't understand how things work, we consistently pour into the machine that's grinding our future and destroying the uh, the future opportunities of our children. 
again, I've taught on this extensively, but we would rather focus on what Chris Rock is doing. We'd rather focus on what Rihanna's doing. We'd rather focus on what Beyonce's doing. And my thing is, if you want to be entertained, by all means do so. But that entertainment should be in direct correspondence and relationship to the amount of time you spend in empowering yourself, in becoming aware of the things that are harming you and harming the future of your offspring. That should be your focus, not on um, what somebody's doing, what somebody's wearing, what somebody said. All of that stuff is a distraction. And we've used the distraction as a form of escapism for years. When we're laughing, we're not thinking about the struggle. When we are uh, getting emotionally involved in the next great movie, we are not thinking about the struggle. When we are playing the music that they push and pipe down, we are feeling enraged and empowered and not realizing we have nowhere to direct the energy that it creates. And it normally becomes destructive because we don't know how to manage what we are hearing and what we are seeing. And we don't know that we have the power to control what we hear and see so that we are programming our minds to function in a way that is conducive for the very things that we say we want. Saying that we want black power won't produce it. Saying that we want to be liberated people won't produce it. Saying that we want to close the wealth gap won't do it. What will do it is learning what steps need to be taken learning how to insulate ourselves from aggression, learning how to prepare our children to move into an arena in which people are inherently hostile towards them, but still thrive. That's our responsibility. That has to be our focus. We need to understand the importance of socializing young black males. We need to understand the importance of reestablishing an appreciation for the black family and black love. We need to understand the importance of, of properly empowering and educating our youth, understanding that education isn't simply the acquisition of academic skills. It is the empowerment and preparation of young children to go out into that world I spoke of that's inherently hostile towards them and not only compete but win. That's education. It's the holistic process. It isn't simply about the books, the math, and the reading. It's about teaching them who they are giving them a sense of identity before they ever touch ground in a world that doesn't like them and that will try to redefine them. We're missing the boat. We'll invest it emotionally, psychologically, and even spiritually in something that does not produce power for us. And then we get frustrated when we don't get the results that we desire. I'm just watching. We've not had just one bank. We've had two. Just collapse that's going to have a reverber reverberating effect it doesn't mean that the world is going to come to an end but what it means is if you don't know how to move in it you're not going to first of all be able to take advantage of opportunities that and that will be opportunities that persist no matter how the market moves it's always an opportunity most people are simply on the wrong side of it most of the time because they don't what understand how things work that's why i created this course this course isn't my knowledge this course is the knowledge that i saw of the top performers in manage money management and investing the people whose names when mentioned and re read in this course you will know who they are i studied them for what almost 10 years. I uh, interviewed them for years. I studied their work, read their books, and I took that information, ran my research on it to see how each particular mechanism performs, and that shit works, and it doesn't matter who's on the front end of it. It doesn't just work for them. It works for anybody who does it. The thing is, nobody's being told about it. Nobody's being exposed to it. It's the kept secret. The crazy thing is, they'll talk about it, but nobody's paying attention to them because you can't relate to them. So you got the idiots down on the lower level talking a bunch of noise, got you going in a bunch of different directions. And so you stop trusting it. 
That's why I put it together. This isn't my expertise. This is the expertise of the, the ones that are winning at the game consistently. And it's something you need to understand. We talk about finance and, and moving in markets and investments. In many instances, especially with the stock market, it's a zero-sum game. In order for somebody to win, somebody's losing. When you when you sell off and lose, somebody's buying. And if they're buying from you, it's because they believe what you're selling is going to improve. You lost. And if they're right, they won. And it goes a whole bunch of different ways and you just have to know how to be on the right side of that more times than you're not nobody's going to do it perfectly nobody's going to get it right every time but that's why diversity is so important but this isn't about as much about finance as it about m mindset we have to do a better job of putting our minds and our focuses on the things that matter how can we better prepare our children? How can we actually start to create a better financial situation for ourselves? How can we create uh, power in the political arena so that statutes and laws that are created represent our interests? How can we create businesses? How can we defend our communities, what's left of them from gentrification? A very devastating force. Serial force displacement is about so much more than the money that's lost. It's a health risk. I wrote about the, the dangers and the threats of serial force displacement. All the way from redlining, urban renewal, benign neglect, gentrification. All of these are forms of serial force displacement. And we are always the target. But nobody's sitting up. Like I said, I come up with solutions. Nobody's talking about them because it's not... It's not exciting. It's not entertaining. And that's why we're in last place, because we rather laugh and dance than make moves. That's costing us. And I, 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 I like dancing. I love to laugh. But I also want to make sure that I create a space for my children and their children and their grandchildren that is safe to live in and that they have a space in and where they don't have to beg anybody for a job, where they don't have to beg anybody to let them uh, be okay. They don't have to beg anybody not to kill them, where they are respected because we paved the path and we gave them a, 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 a sense of power so that they're respected. That's our responsibility. We failed. And it's our responsibility to correct that failure. Look, I'm going to get ready to get off of here. But I just had to uh, talk about this. I sit up and I've watched it. And it is a major reason why we can't get on. We are, as Dr. Anderson would say, majoring in the minor. And it's time that we start looking at the major things. And that's going to be my thing. I'm gonna keep, we got to learn how things work. We got to place our hat on things that have substantial power, force, and capacity to do the things we say we want to do. It's time to stop bumping. And it's time to start humping. It's that simple. So I'm challenging you. It's time to make a move. For those of you who want to check out uh, what's going on with um, the Legacy Wealth Program, uh, if you want to enroll, there's a few ways to do it. It's in the description box. I'm not going to get into it. Um, if not, you still need to know what's going on. You're going to have to educate yourself. You can't sit up and not know how things work and think that life is just going to flow for you. You'll have some good moments and you'll have bad, but you'll never be in control of it. It'll all be, it will always be somebody else. While you're going to always have some rough moments, you can control uh, and always know and have the confidence that even in those rough moments, you'll recover because you know what happened. You can figure it out. You understand it. When you hear news about a bank failing, you can start looking into it and see what's going on. You know what the reverberations is going to be. 
it's time to wake the hell up. And this isn't just happening in the financial industry. It's just the thing that I stood up and I thought about. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Hopefully you guys get it. But I'm going to keep bringing it whether you do or not. On that note, I'm going to help you guys out.